two companies have enjoyed rally success on the back of two of their harmless-looking family saloons. But those same cars have developed a cult following thanks to a mixture of blistering performance and in-your-face looks. This week, Dream Deals looks at the Mitsubishi Evo and the Subaru Impreza. Well, the cars that we've got here, um, the vehicle I've got and leaning against here is the Evo 7. That was first imported in March of this year. We've got an Evolution 6, which were produced in 1999, a 5 and a 4. The Evo 7 was actually produced on a different chassis. Um, the, the 6, 5 and 4 are all the same floor plan. So if you're already tempted by one of these rally-based supercars, how much should you be paying? An Evolution 4, I say for a good example, um, you pay about 15,000. For about an Evo 5, between 18 and 19, um, depending on the specifications and any upgrades it's had, an Evo 6 up to 24,000, and in a brand new Evo 7, start at 27,500. So, when were all the models introduced to the UK? It's difficult to say because there are grey imports. For example, this Evo 7 is not officially into the UK until 2002. But it's safe to say that the Evo 4 was produced in 95 and then subsequently the 5, 6 and then shortly to be official the 7 in March 2002. Although this car produces high performance as standard, many owners have modified their cars to increase this performance. With these modified cars, are there any extra mechanical problems to look out for? I think like anything, with all used cars, you need to pay special attention or particular attention to if it's been in any accidents, which generally people know. Um, they're all two litre turbocharged engines. Um, there are certain modifications that can be done that don't affect the, the reliability of the vehicles, which is generally either induction kits and exhaust. I think if there's been any internal changes, then clearly if it's a used vehicle, it needs to be an approved um, technician that, that's done the work and you need evidence of that. Are there any differences we should be aware of if we decide to buy an import? There's absolutely no difference between a grey imported vehicle and the official UK vehicle. What tends to happen is they come with a three-year warranty as an official car, whereas we only provide a two-year warranty. But there's a significant price difference. But clearly it's the same factory that produced these vehicles. What kind of things should we be looking out for when buying an Evo? I think it's important that you look at things like the tyres on the vehicle. If they've not had standard size tyres, then that can affect the diffs. Um, obviously, tyre wear, um, you need to check that the tracking's right because tyres for one of these vehicles is up to £150. And um, gearbox, because they're a performance car, um, you check that the synchro, you've got no noises from the gearbox. Uh, second and third can sometimes need a synchro change. All of these are not terribly expensive, but for a, a gearbox strip is at circa £400. So you just need to drive the vehicle and perhaps have somebody with a degree of expertise to, to check it with you. I think what is important that if you are looking out to buy a used Evolution, as I said, you look at the bodywork. But it's, you, you need a good service history. Um, all the oils need to be changed every 7,500 and the anti yaw and the diff oils every 4,500. If this hasn't been done, then you can run into diff problems. So that does need checking before you purchase. So what about the important issue of depreciation? These are not high numbers, they're not in the glasses guide. So depreciation tends to be very good. If you look at the price between a brand new Evo 7, for example, at 27,500, there are Evo 6s that are 12 months old, but are still selling for around about 23 and a half to 24,000 pounds. And in today's economy and climate in the motor trade, that's very good value. But perhaps its strongest competition comes from a fellow Japanese manufacturer. The Subaru Impreza has been around for a number of years now and has a strong following amongst those that want rally car performance in a usable road car. But what model should we go for? I think practically the version 3s were from version 3 upwards um, are the ones to go for and they're around about the £12,000 for a good version 3. 
can get the limited edition version 3s like the triple fives um, and they're around about 15,000. They're all the light bodied Japanese imported versions which are 276 brake horse. What areas of the car should we check when buying? Again, like we said with the evolutions, um, it's the bodywork. There have not been major accidents. Check when you're looking at the service history and if it's due for a major service, which is the belts, they can be expensive. You can look at £400 service bill. Um, you, you certainly don't want to buy that and then have to spend that, that amount of money. You, you need to check that the diffs, particularly on some of the STI versions, which have got the diff lock, uh, drive the car. Some of them can be faulty, but you can hear the bearing noises. Check the gears and synchros. With Impressors, yes, you can do the, the modifications that you can with the Evolution, but you can't get the brake horsepower really over 320 brake without going into the internals of the engine. So it's perhaps prudent not to buy anything that's gone beyond the induction and, and an exhaust system. When it comes to the suspension side, then fine, it's just exactly the same. What are the differences between the STI and a UK spec car? The difference between the STI and the UK car is that these are they're light bodied. Um, the, the standard UK vehicle, which you can get as, as a Subaru 2 litre turbo, develops 215 brake horsepower. These are the 276, so the, the, there's considerable difference with 17 inch alloys instead of 16 inch alloys. As I said, the Brembo's uh, interior trim, it's got the Alcantara trim and six speed gearbox. A lot of technicals, on the technical side, there's a huge difference, although on the face of it, it's not that noticeable. So would Simon pick the Mitsubishi or the Subaru? It's difficult to have a preference because they're both very good high performance vehicles that can cater for a family. Um, the Evo is only four door, whereas the Subarus you can get two and four door. But with the performance being the same um, and, and handling being exceptional on all the vehicles and price similar, it's really down to personal taste. I think perhaps the Evolution looks a little bit more uh, aggressive than the Subaru. So it's just all down to lifestyles and where you're taking the vehicle. It's a difficult choice. I wouldn't want to have to make the choice. It's easy to see why these cars have such a loyal following amongst car enthusiasts. With blistering performance and aggressive looks, these Japanese supercars are more than a match for more established marks, but for a fraction of the price.